All right, so continuing on in our unit, um, last we were talking about the angles in a circle, and so now we're going to specifically be talking about the segments of a circle. So we're not going to be talking about degree measurements necessarily anymore. Now we're going to be talking about lengths of lines, so segments. So circle conjecture 10 says if two segments from the same external point are tangent to the circle, then the segments are congruent. Segments are congruent. I'm going to go ahead and put this in parentheses. That's the congruent symbol, so an equal sign with a squiggly line over top. So I'm going to go ahead and draw two tangent lines like this. So there's one tangent line. I want them to cross. Here's my other tangent line. Sorry, my chair squeaked. Okay, so here's the point of tangency for the first tangent line. There's the point of tangency for the second tangent line. Here is that external point where they're crossing. External point. And so what this circle conjecture 10 is saying is that these two segments are the same length. They're equivalent in length. All right, so for example, if you have the measure of angle ABC, so angle from A to B to C, this angle right here is 65 degrees, um, then the measure of angle ACB, ACB is what? Well, we're not sure. That's what we're trying to find. And the measure of BAC, BAC, that's this one over here. We're not sure about that one either. Okay, so we have two tangent lines. They say all lines that appear to be tangent are. So the tangent from B to A, the tangent from C to A, that means that this right here and this right here, those two segments are equivalent, which means that this right here, this triangle ABC, is an isosceles triangle. And if you guys remember isosceles triangles, um, or triangles in general, the side and the angle that is across from it, there's a relationship there. So this side to this angle, this side to this angle, there's a relationship. Well, if these two sides are the same, then the angles that correspond to them have to be the same as well. So if this side corresponds to 65 degrees and this side is the same as this one, then this side has to correspond to a 65 degree angle as well. So that means, I thought I was erasing it, but I wasn't. Um, so that means the angle uh, ACB is 65 degrees, all right, just because that was an isosceles triangle. So then to figure out the other angle, we can just do 180 minus 65, minus 65, minus 65. And when we subtract 65 and subtract 65, we get 50, so that means that that third angle was a 50 degree angle. Right. Uh, here's another picture that they gave us. We have a circle um, and a circumscribed quadrilateral. The quadrilateral is outside of the circle. Over here we have a circle and a circumscribed triangle. Um, so the triangle is outside of the circle. And so what they've done is they've got tangent lines. And these types of pictures are pretty common. They're very easy to deal with. So you just work with it. You kind of ignore everything else and you say, oh, there's two tangent lines. Uh, these two measurements have to be the same. So if this is three, that means that this is three. Okay, there's a tangent line and a tangent line. They meet at this external point. So if this is five, that means that this is five. Uh, tangent line, tangent line meets at an external point. If this is six, then this is six. So if they want to know the perimeter, that means we just need to add these up. We have five and five and six and six and three and three. We're just going to add all of those up. And when we add those up, we get 28. So the perimeter there is 28. Uh, problems like four you've actually already done before. Um, <laughs> Number example four doesn't really fit in this section. It actually fits a little bit more with circle conjecture number seven, where we talked about um, 
tangent lines, um, when they hit a diameter or when they hit a radius, they make that 90 degree angle and they form right triangles. Typically, that's what we end up doing with these problems a lot is forming right triangles. Um, and so I actually have a similar problem here. Uh, radius of five, that tangent line is 12. And so the hypotenuse is actually 13. I'm going to ignore x. I'm going to say, oh, this is the whole hypotenuse right here. So I'm just going to kind of do the work that I already did for that example problem right there. So I've got 5 squared plus 12 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. It's just a right triangle. We're doing the Pythagorean theorem. So 5 squared plus 12 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Um, that's 20. 5 plus 144 equals h squared, so 169 equals h squared, which means that the hypotenuse is 13. Okay, so that means that the entire length here, this whole hypotenuse is 13. Now the part that we have to think about is how they want us to solve for x. So if this is a radius of 5, that means that this is a radius of 5 which means if they want to know what x is, they want to know if this whole thing is 13, 13 take away, take away 5, that means that this is 8. So x here actually just equals 8. Right. Uh, circle conjecture 11. So we're going to go ahead and skip to example 2. We're going to do that in class together. Uh, circle conjecture 11. If two chords in a circle are congruent, then their corresponding arcs, then their corresponding arcs, and here we're talking about the lengths. So remember, in our last set of notes, we were talking about the angle measurements of the arcs. Now we're talking about the lengths of the arcs um, are congruent as well. So if you have a picture, and in the picture they say like, okay, here's one uh, chord and here's another chord, and this is congruent and this is congruent, here is the arc that goes with that first chord, then this arc over here that goes with the second chord, that would be congruent to the other arc. So those, the lengths of those arcs would actually be the same length. Okay, uh, example five, we're going to leave that for in class. Circle conjecture 12 says, if a radius or a diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and its arc. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture of that. Here is a radius, so a radius, and you can do a radius or a diameter. And then here we're going to have a drawing of a chord. And it says a radius or a diameter of a circle is perpendicular, so this has to make a 90 degree angle right there. Okay, it says it bisects the chord. What it means by bisect is it cuts it in half. That's what the word bisect means. So if these are perpendicular, that means that this length and this length here are equivalent. And it means that this arc and this arc right here are also equivalent in length. Okay, so I'm going to write a little note to myself right here that bisect means cut in half. Cut in half. All right. Example six says, and circle O, if OH is perpendicular to AT, a little note to myself that this sign means perpendicular, so it forms a 90 degree angle, perpendicular. Um, so what that means is that these two lengths are the same. It means that these arcs are also the same. Okay, so it says if from O to T is a length of 10, 
So they're telling me the radius of the circle from the center to the edge is a length of 10, and O to N is a length of 8. I'm in my classroom, and I was very still, and the lights went out. Uh, o to M is a length of 8. They want us to find the length from A to T. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label this side right here is a length of x. So what you have is a right triangle right here. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to start with. We can say, all right, 10 is the hypotenuse. So we can say 8 squared plus x squared equals 10 squared. So we have 64 plus x squared equals 100. I'm going to go ahead and minus the 64. So x squared equals 36. 100 minus 64 is 36. And then if I go ahead and square root it, I get that x equals 6. So this segment right here is a length of 6. And then because of what we learned about circle conjecture 12, these two lengths have to be identical. Since this is perpendicular, those lengths are the same. So if this is 6, this has to be 6 as well. And then the distance from A to T all the way across has to be a length of 12. So AT equals 12. All right, circle conjecture 13 says if two chords in a circle are congruent, then they are equidistant, then they are equidistant from the center. So here's the center of the circle. If we have a chord here, and we have a chord here, and I say, oh, this chord and this chord are congruent, then that means that this distance right here and this distance right here um, are the same. So right here, these two little notches, I'm saying that the lengths of those chords are equivalent, then that means that these lengths are equivalent as well. All right. So example seven says in circle O, MN is congruent to PQ. So they're telling you um, to start with that these two chords are equivalent in length. Um, OT is 3x, OS is x plus 15, and they want you to solve for x. So if the chords um, are equivalent, then that means that these distances, OT is the distance of the chord to the center, um, OS is the distance of the chord to the center, then those distances have to be the same as well. So we're going to say 3x equals x plus 15, and then I'm going to go ahead and subtract the x over, 2x equals 15, divide by 2, um, x equals 15 halves, or you could say x equals 7.5. Either one is fine. Um, and then the rest of the example problems, we're going to go ahead and just save um, for when we do the rest of the notes in class.